You set foot on foreign soil. Only this land isn't ruled by any country or government. In this land, we celebrate music. In this land, we celebrate games. In this land, we celebrate those who compose video game music. Welcome to the VG Embassy. Embassy. Welcome and thanks for tuning in to another episode of the VG Embassy. This is a show centered around video game music and the amazing online community of fans and podcasters that enjoy it. My name's Ed, and on each episode I'll take the role of Prime VGM Minister and invite a guest VG Ambassador onto the show to share with us their own video game music culture. Or I may share a part of my culture on a solo show. And today is not a solo show. Today, Today's actually going to be kind of a... A quickie, I think. It's not going to be a super long show. I am fresh back from MAGFest 2020. I had a huge, awesome time. It was a very quick 48 hours. Went there on Friday, came back on Saturday. It's about a five to six to seven hour trip, depending on how many stops and what traffic is like. So uh, spent a lot of time in the car, but spent a lot of time seeing some very awesome friends. Cameron Childs, Carlito, the Mercado Brothers... Uh, Robin Purnell from Rhythm and Pixels, tons of super awesome people. Chris Murray was there. So we had a great time, saw some super awesome bands. Look forward to the Embassy exclusive Patreon subscribers if you want to hear me talk a little bit more in detail about what I did and who I saw and who I hung out with. Some of you were even there, so you'll be able to share the experience with me. Anyhow, today I've got a super awesome VG ambassador with me, none other than my dear friend, William Harkmeyer. William, how are you today? Good. William, you sound very young. Because I'm not William. Oh, I thought you were pretty short for William. What is your name anyway? Logan. Oh, Uh, Logan. I forgot we were doing a show together today. Come on, man. Jeez, I don't know. So so how have you been? How was your Christmas? Good. Good? Did you get get anything cool? Yes. What'd you get? Everything. You got everything. On the whole earth. You got a tank and a aircraft carrier and yeah. a house and and a castle and... A person. And a person? Yes. Yeah. No, but seriously, did you get anything cool? Mm-hmm. What'd you get? Beyblades. Beyblades. That's pretty cool. Hot Wheels. Some Hot Wheels cars. A new iPad. Oh, yeah. And that's part of the reason why we're doing the show that we're doing today, right? Kind of. I mean, at least one of the games that we're going to be featuring is something that you can yes. play on your iPad, right? Yes. Yeah. So what are we talking about today? Golf. Golf? Golf. Crazy golf. Originally, we were just going to do a mini golf show, but then as we started adding some games that we wanted to talk about and play some music from, we realized that it wasn't just mini golf. It was crazy golf, right? Crazy. Crazy golf. So we'll kind of talk about these games as we go through, and um, we've got kind of a half a show, so we're doing seven songs today that Logan and I both picked out together. Mm-hmm. So, Logan, why did you want to do a crazy golf game show? Because I like golf. You like to go out on the links and go hit real golf balls? I like to go mini golfing. Okay, well, what do you like about mini golf games? They're just fun. Cool. And it's fun to play with family, right? Yes. It's something that everybody can play even if they're not very good at video games. Nope. There's lots of colorful different courses to play through. Mm Mm-hmm. What about the music? Fantastic. Yeah, some really good tunes. Fantastic. I remember we were we were playing. I think we, as while we were playing a mini golf game together, that we were listening to some tunes and going, "Hey, man, this would really be good for a podcast." So, yes. And we're gonna definitely feature that one. And uh, there's a couple of games in here that are golf adjacent. Maybe they are kind of like golf, played similar to golf, but you don't necessarily use golf balls. Like this first one we got coming up. This first one's Lavatron 2 from Ribbit King. Came out on the PS2 GameCube in 2003. 
and it was composed by Yusuke Takahama. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. That was Lavatron 2 from Ribbit King that came out on the PS2 and the GameCube in 2003, composed by Yusuke Takahama. Mmm, good game, good song, very groovy, kind of a funky song. A little bit simple, but I thought it was really fun to listen to while we were playing the game. What'd you think of it? Amazing. You really liked it? Yes. What were some of your favorite parts? I just liked all of it. Yeah? Yeah. How did it make you feel? Sad? No. Sleepy? No. Excited? No. Groovy? Yes. Yeah. Made you feel cool? Like really like kind of like focused? Yeah. I think I think for this game it really kind of helps the listener play the game a little bit better, for sure. Uh, it's got some nice strummy funky guitars, cool little bass line. Like I said, it's it's pretty simple in terms of music, but it's just uh, it's so catchy and it's really easy to Keep humming it in your head after you've heard it before. I mean, Yusuke Takahama has been around for ages. He's composed tons of video games. He is a guitarist in one of the biggest Japanese rock bands out there called Anthem. Um, he owns two different recording companies and is the director of both of them. He's composed music for all sorts of video games and movies and anime and stuff like that. So he's a really, really famous composer over in Japan seems pretty cool that he also made this little game for Bandai back in 2003. What'd you think of the game? We we started playing this game yesterday, and you hated it, right? No, I still loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Explain how you play it a little bit. So, in this game, instead of you playing as a golf ball, you play as a frog. And you have a hammer. You don't bang the frog. You bang like a catapult that launches the frog Mm -hmm. to try to get a frog in, which is like a hole, a giant hole with water in it and a gem on top. So it's basically not golf. It's called frolf. Yes. Frog golf. And so... If so, if you play the one-player story mode, you play as this cute little cartoony kid with, like, a white hood with ears called, uh, what's his name, Scooter? Yes. Yes, so Scooter, and he has his sidekick whose name is Pickwick, and he's a picnic basket with a face on it that talks, and their home planet of Ribotopia is running out of, what was it called, Super... Ribbonite? I Super think. Ribbonite. Super Ribbonite was like the fuel that the planet works on or yeah, something. Yeah, it's probably a mechanical planet. Yeah, something like that. So they're running out, and so Scooter is tasked 
by the king to go to different planets in the galaxy and play Frolf against the people that live on those planets to gain more super ribbonite so he can bring it back to Ribotopia, which I thought was a pretty cool plot. And there's like a whole like CG cartoon, like cutscenes and fully voiced voice acting and stuff. It's it's really cool to have a golf game like this, but also have like this kids animated series kind of like in between the courses that you play. And the courses are really fun too. They're full of obstacles. So you launch your frog across the course and it will land and it will hop a couple times. And, you know, it's all 3D, but there are little bubbles all over the place with different numbers of points. So you can get the points if you pop the bubbles. There's conveyor belts that you can land on that will bring it to other parts. There's like whirlpools that serve like teleportation portals. Sometimes you land and like a giant monster will pop out of the ground and start shaking you and you've got to rattle the, the right analog stick to get away from the monster. Yeah, or if something like a countdown when you press X, and it jumps away. Yep, yep. Like something is going to land on you. So you like like uh, if you're in um the prehistoric jungle level, there's a woolly mammoth, and he'll he'll stop, and it'll count down until he stops, and you have to hit the button as soon as he stops to get away, and you get some bonus points. And if you don't hit the button at the right time, then you lose points. Lose points. Yeah, exactly. And your frog gets squished. And your frog gets squished. Or blown away. Yep. So the whole object is to end up with more points by the end of the four holes for each planet uh, in order to beat that level and move on to the next one. So yes. it's really, really cool. It's a lot of fun. It's way more fun than it sounds, maybe. I don't know. If you're digging it, then definitely try it out because it's probably a pretty cheap game. And also, it doesn't matter about if you get in the hole first. It matters about how much points you get. Like, right. Like if someone has 3,000 and the other has 1,000, they make it in, get 2,000, then the other person makes it in, and they get 4,000, then they win that round. Yeah, yeah. So you get 1,000 points for getting into the hole first, but then each additional shot the next person takes that the award for getting into the hole is reduced by 100. So your next shot is 900 points, and your next shot after that is 800 points. So you have to make sure that you're doing enough obstacles to make up for losing from that 1,000 points if you don't get into the hole first. So it's really kind of a give and take of doing so many obstacles to get a lot of points or just go straight to the hole and try to get the thousand and hope that the other person doesn't get as many points from obstacles and stuff. So it's really cool. There's a lot of strategy involved. It's a lot of fun to play for two players. The characters are really silly. The first place you go to is this, like I said, prehistoric jungle planet and you have to fight a caveman panda, right? Called Pan Pan. Yep. And he fights, he smashes the catapult with like a big femur, which is pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty cool. I really enjoyed it. I've played this game forever. I got it when it was new on the GameCube and we're playing it on the PS2 here. And uh, I've never gotten tired of it. Even even mom likes to play this game. She was digging it. She remembered during the loading screens, it says now loading, but there's a little picture of a frog in the middle where it says now loading. So we always shout now frog loading. <laughs> And mom really thinks that's funny, too. So, anyways, uh, Ribbit King, try it out. Listen to the soundtrack. It's really cool. And I'm sure we're going to be playing more. Actually, when you came home from school today, Logan, I was like, hey, dude, the microphone's all set up. Let's go record the show. And you're like, can we play another round of Frolf before we start recording? So, we played another round of Frolf. And we actually played Lavatron. And we heard Lavatron, too. You know, the Lavatron music for the second hole. And we were like, yep, this one's the one that's going to go in the show because it was really good, right? Yep. All right. You want to move on to the next song? Yes. All right. What do we got coming up? Space from Golf With Your Friends came out on the PC on PC in 2017. And it was composed by Chris Wiltshire. Bye.
Welcome back. That was Space from Golf With Your Friends. Came out on the PC in 2017. Composed by Chris Wiltshire. This is a really pretty track, Logan. I'm surprised that you picked this one over all of the more rockin' and cartoony sounding songs from this one. What do you like so much about this track? It's just a very calm song. Yeah, it is really calm. Mm -hmm. It feels very warm. It feels very relaxing, and it feels like it's something that you could just kind of float off into space while listening to. It's a very spacey track, right? Yes. Yeah, I feel I can almost feel like like I can see the stars rotating in the sky and and stuff. So it's a perfect match for this level that you play on in golf with your friends. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about this game. Golf with your friends is literally exactly what it says in the title. It's in the name. You golf with your friends. And how do you do that? Online or local. True. And what do you use, a real putter? I don't even think there's any clubs in it. (laughs) It's true. There aren't any clubs at all. Um, So you just use your mouse. It's a very simple interface. When it's your turn, you just click and then drag the mouse forward for your power. Move your mouse back and forth for your aim. And then you let go of the button and the ball goes. And sometimes, depending on your options, and there are a lot of options in this game, you can click again to make the ball jump while it's rolling around. Yeah. But this game started off a couple years ago on Steam in early access, and I believe it is still in early access. It's not officially launched. It still is. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is officially launched. Maybe. They're still Well, they're still working on it, and they're still making new stuff for it, even though it's I think it's out of early access at this point. But there are a ton of different themes and courses Still some hills bounce your ball right back to where you started. Yeah, well, that's if you use some of the stuff that's not fully... So you can... They've done a lot of really cool stuff. You can use a regular golf ball, or you can change the shape of your ball. You can change it into a hockey puck. You can change it into, like, an acorn or a Christmas ornament, a cylinder. There are a lot of really weird shapes. Yeah, cubes to make it really, really hard for you to... You can change the gravity of the course. And the courses are huge. They're all one giant level. Also an isosphere. And iso... Oh, yeah, you can turn your ball into an isosphere as well. That's right. But the levels are gigantic, and all 18 holes are fit into this one plane. And so you can accidentally hit your ball off the course and onto a different course if you go really, really far. But um, they all have kind of a, like, you adventure through the whole level as you play through the course. So, like in the Egypt level, for instance, or the desert level, there's a gigantic pyramid off in the distance, and as you play, you get closer and closer to the pyramid, and by the 18th hole, you are inside the pyramid for the the final hole. By the 18th year, I think you're outside of the pyramid. Yeah, but then the hole is actually inside it or something like that. Yes. You end up going through it at some point towards the end. And there's lots of other really cool stuff. This is a really, really fun game. My buddy Brian from Impulse Project and Pixelated Audio, we used to play this online all the time. And uh, you can set up online rooms to play just privately with you and friends that you know, or you can set it up to play with people from all over the internet. And uh, so he and I used to just chat on Skype and then kind of play this game at the same time and we would just talk and hang out and play and try to get through the levels together with the lowest score and we had a lot of fun but logan and i love to play this too we even got mom involved because all you have to do is really pass the mouse back and forth to uh to play and the physics are really good the levels are really challenging but they're not overly challenging some of them have lots of moving parts and you go all over the place and it's it's simple but it's super super fun the graphics are pretty cool to look at the music is is really cool different musical themes for every level. What are some of the courses? We've got Candyland, Forest, Prehistoric, which... Is ancient. I think it's called Ancient. Yes, which pretty much just came out. We've got Museum. Yep, that's the newest one. Yeah. Haunted House. Mm-hmm. And we have, we have space. the default. Yep, so this one takes place on a space station. I think it takes space... It takes space. Takes place in space, in your face... All over the place. (laughs) But yeah, this is on a giant space station, and it's got, like, rotating parts and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think if there was any other ones that were there. Oh, Desert, we mentioned that one. Yep. Oh, there's Worms, because the the company that was making the game was just, I think, two guys in their bedroom or something that were developing the game. And then uh, Team 17, the guys who make the Worms games, 
ended up getting very interested in the game, so they invested in it, and now there's a, a really cool course based on Worms, which is pretty fun. So, a lot of really cool stuff. Definitely a game worth playing. It's probably pretty cheap on Steam, and uh, it's fun to play with other people all over the world, and you don't really have to be a, a huge gamer to enjoy it. You just kind of chill out and play some courses together. So, we've had a lot of fun. I'm sure we're going to play more of this in the future, right? Yes. We might even play some tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see if we have time. Mm-hmm. All right. Ready for the next one? Yes. What do we got coming up? Super Golf Yo from What the Golf by Soon Coter Colster. That's his name. All right. We'll be right back. That was Super Golfio from the game What the Golf that came out on iOS just a couple months ago in 2019. And probably, I think it's coming out on Switch pretty soon by Sune Coulter Coaster. And this is a really, really fun game. Uh, if you have an iOS device and you have Apple Arcade, this game is free right now with the uh, Apple Arcade subscription. So you can go check it out. The music is all like this, so it's a cappella with kind of minimalist instrument accompaniment. And uh, did you recognize any melodies from any other games in this particular track, Logan? Kind of. Like what? Mario. Definitely Mario. Yes. It kind of sounds like a combination of the Mario Underworld theme and the Mario Overworld theme, right? Yes. It's like it's got that da 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 da, but then it's also got do 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 do. So it's really <laughs> kind of neat how they mix the two together. And this game... And they say, what the golf? Almost all of the songs say, what the golf, in some sort of fashion, uh, if you listen closely enough. Super putt. Super putt. So that's, a, that's something good that we should talk about, too, because... Okay, so this game, every single level is played a little bit differently. So you basically control the ball by dragging your finger backwards and then letting go and the ball you know as you drag your finger backwards your power meter goes up the further you drag backwards and you can slide it back and forth to change your aim and then you Just let like, go yeah. and you would think okay that would make your ball go forward but it's not always a ball that you're playing with sometimes it's a house and sometimes it's a companion cube and sometimes it's a person and sometimes it's a <laughs> um portal gun and sometimes it's a golf club and sometimes it's a barrel and sometimes it's a sometimes it's a million soccer balls or golf balls sometimes it's a bottle of champagne Some sometimes you're actually putting the hole into the ball <laughs> it's there's some sometimes wacky stuff. you're putting the hole into a one and then it says hole in one exactly <laughs> the dumbest joke ever it's a really really clever game the the whole tagline for the game is it's golf for people who hate golf <laughs> yep and some of the levels there's groups of levels that you have to get through to get to the end of the game so it is kind of linear but there's hundreds and hundreds of stages Millions. but some of the uh, levels themselves are based on other video game properties. So this is Super Golfio. So this was a series of golf levels based on the Super Mario Brothers series. Um, there's a, a series of levels based on Portal, where you have to put your whatever it is through different portals to get to the end. You might need to put a fruit into a bowl. Yes. Um, there are... You said Super Putt before, and that's from a game called Super Hot. Yeah. Where it's like a first-person shooter. Hot. 
vault where um, things only move when you move. So in this, you're trying to put a ball into the into the hole, but at the same time, you've got guys all over the level trying to shoot at you. Yeah. And the and I mean, they only move them, when you of, move. So it's played just like super hot. They can still shoot you when you're staying still. Yeah, but when you drag your finger back to go, everything slows down, and then it speeds back up again when you finally shoot yes, the ball. Especially when you have the um shot the. Sh- Oh, that's right. Your ball can actually pick up guns yes. and shoot at the guys as they're going through. <laughs> so, it's crazy stuff. Yeah. It's all very cartoony and very fun. Sometimes you are, uh, you get to take control of a car, and you get to have the car skidding through courses and trying to Some, avoid exploding barrels. And Sometimes you are an AR when you're playing the game. Like, if, it, if the goal is to get rid of all the cats, and you're in first person as the ball... Then usually you have to knock into the cats. Yeah. Yeah. You have to tip all the cats over. Yep. Yep. Super duper fun. When this game comes out on Switch, if you do not have an iPad or an iPhone, grab it. It is hilarious. Even if you don't like golf, like I said, it's for people who hate golf. It is so much fun and it's super addictive and uh, I think you will have a blast. And the soundtrack is a lot of fun, too. Uh, it's A lot of it sounds just like this. And sometimes there are takeoffs on the uh, different tunes from the s- series of levels that are being kind of, like, copied. Very well-made game. And yes, even though I don't hate golf, I still play it a lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot. Just a lot of a lot. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I'm still trying to get through all the levels. I'm pretty close to the end, but... uh, So the level is like an overworld where there's lots of different flags all over the place, and you have to shoot your ball into the flags, which triggers the level to start. And then after you beat that level, where you kind of have an infinite number of uh, shots to get through it, then you can go back into it to get a crown for each flag. Yes. And on that, then you have to do... three things. Right. Like, if there's a par, and it's par five, and it's an easy level that only needs three shots yeah then i'm wondering why they would give you five shots yeah that (laughs) just means that you're really good at it but some of the later ones you really have to pick and choose where you're gonna shoot so that you can get to the the hole in in the number of shots that they allow you to and then sometimes they'll 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 twist up the level with like a little twist it's kind of like almost like um like warioware meets mini golf i think is the best way to put it So, anyways, keep an eye out for What the Golf. You will enjoy it. Glowing recommendation from both Logan and I, right? Yes. Yes. All right. A million percent, guys. A million percent. All right, so we're going to... Go into the next song. Yes, we're going to go into the next song. And uh, after we listen to this one, we're going to have a little golf quiz, okay? Yes. All right, sounds good. So what are we listening to now? Barry Golf Medley. From Barry Bradford's Putt Panic Party. Came out on the Switch on 2019 by Levy Bound DBXY. So it's, yeah, Levi Bond from DBXY. Be right back.
All right, that was a medley from Barry Bradford's Putt Panic Party. That came out on the Switch. I certainly hope my pop filter is filtering out all those peas. Putt Panic Party. And that was composed by Levi Bond from the DBXY Media Group. They are a bunch of people who write songs for video games and commercials and stuff. And so this is a few... Uh, incidental pieces of music from In the Game, which I will explain why that is in a moment, followed up by the really cool and really groovy title screen music. So what'd you think of the music? I know your thoughts on the game, Logan, but what did you think about the music? Amazing. Yeah, you really like it? Yes. It's good stuff, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It sounds kind of like game show style, like really upbeat and energetic and kind of cheesy sounding, but also really well produced at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, the game is very unique, and I really enjoy it, but you're not a big fan of it, right? No. No. So the way you play it is, you can get up to four players, each with their own controller, and it's a like a 2D isometric golf course, mini golf course that you're on. And instead of everybody taking turns to put their way to the hole, there's a countdown timer. And so you have to line up your shot and your power all at the same time as the timer counts down. And then once the timer gets to zero, all the balls go at the same time. And just like regular golf, you have to see who can get the ball in in the fewest amount of strokes. So it's pretty simple. The levels are pretty simple too. It's it's definitely a party game. It's not like one of those things where you're gonna like want to increase your skill and you know get super awesome at it because there's not much to get super awesome at. But I was having fun, and I was kind of interested in why you weren't a big fan of this one. Um, it's just, it's just not the kind of golf that I usually like. Okay. Did you find it frustrating, or was it too easy? Definitely not too easy. Yeah, you were having a tough time with it. Yes. Yeah, it's it's tough because usually when you're playing, I know when you're playing other games, you sometimes like to go second when you're playing mini golf. So you, you like to see what the first player does and what their what their aim was and how powerful they want to hit it. And then you kind of try to base your next shot off of that. You're very analytical like that. When everybody's hitting at the same time, it's really hard to kind of see what they're doing so that you can try to hit your own one, right? Yes. So uh, the music is fun. So the reason why there's not a lot of really long pieces of music in this game, obviously, is because each of these little musical vignettes play as the counter times down. And there's in kind of increasingly stressful music that plays for each succeeding stroke. Uh, so like strokes one through four, the music will get a little less friendly sounding, I guess, and maybe a little more intense sounding. So I kind of built it up a little bit, and then went into the title screen music, which was fun. But uh, I have no idea who Barry Bradford is. I don't think he's a real person. Uh, There's just a lot of, like, webcomic-looking characters that you can kind of make as your avatar as you you select your character for the game, so you can all kind of play together. But, uh, yeah, this was, I think, a Switch exclusive. It just came out. It's only on the eShop. It's a digital download only. So uh, we decided to try it out, and I thought the music was really good. So, uh, wanted to put it in the show, but I guess this gets a thumbs up from me and a thumbs down from Logan, so give it a try if it's cheap. Maybe you like it, maybe you won't. Right? Yes. Okay. Well, are you ready for a small golf quiz? Yes. Okay. Question one. How many holes are there on a full golf course? 18. Oh, didn't even have to think about that one. What is it called when you hit the ball into the hole on the suggested number of strokes? Par. What is it called when you hit the ball into the hole with one less than the suggested number of strokes? Either albatross, birdie, or eagle. Whoa! Okay, so those were my next two questions that you already answered. So one less is what? Probably birdie or eagle. Okay, so it's birdie. What's two less? Eagle. And what's three less? Probably albatross. You got it, dude. If it's four. Well, three is... I think three is albatross. And four is probably just four under par or something like that. I don't even, I don't even know if there's a name for that. Four is probably still albatross. 
Albatross plus one, Albatross minus one. Who knows? Anyways, more questions. What happens if you go one over par? Bogey. And two over par? Double bogey. Oh, what about three over par? Triple. <laughs> You're getting these two good, man. All right, let's see if I can come up with anything that's going to stump you. How about in mini golf rules in real life, if you put a ball and it ends up right next to a wall, what are you allowed to do? You're allowed to push it out with your putter. How far? Just a little. Just the length of one putt head. Yep. Very good. You're pretty good at this. The person who wins the mini golf game has either A, the highest score, B, lowest. the. L- <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're going to say. I guess I made these questions too easy for you. Way too easy. Who invented mini golf? I don't know. Where, do you even know? I don't even know. Uh, but I do know where the oldest mini golf course is in the United States. Do you? Nope. We were there. We drove by it, but we never actually played on it. Um, I do. I never remember driving by a golf course. Where are some places that we've been on vacation? Pennsylvania. Not Hershey. Um, Washington. Not Washington, D.C. New York. It's in New York, but where in New York? Albany? Nope, not Albany. I don't we never went to a vacation in uh, Albany. Um New York City. Nope, not New York City. It's on a lake named after a king. Um Your big brother Eddie really liked the pizza at one particular place. I still do not remember. You can't remember? Nope. Lake George. Lake George, New York, has the oldest continuously operating mini golf course in the United States. We went to a mini golf course there, but we did not go to the oldest one. But they have a bunch down there. Cool. You got almost all of them right. I think you got them all right, except for the last one. And some of them you even answered before I could even finish the question. So, high five. Nice job, dude. All right. I guess that makes you the mini golf king. The ribbit king. Master of froth. Wow. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know what that sound was. <laughs> so let's move on to the best mini golf game ever made. What do we got coming Worst. up? <laughs> <laughs> We've got course two from Crazy Zen Mini Golf, which is a weird name. Came out on the Switch in 2019, composed by... I think it's pronounced Jan Grokowski. I hope. Anyways, we'll be right back. Don't judge us. <laughs> All right, that was Course 2 from Crazy Zen Golf. That came out on the Switch just a little while ago, December of 2019, composed by Jan Grokowski. This is a funky little tune, right? Again, kind of simple. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the Ribbit King song and that it's simple, but it's very, very catchy. Nice mm-hmm. little drum beat. What'd you like about it? Like the part where it goes. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom
boom, 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 boom. I like I like good bass groove like that mm -hmm. too, and then those little kind of plinky keyboards in the top. It just has a nice feel. It's something that you can you can listen to loop over and over again and and keep playing like in a mill like a million times a day. Yeah, yeah. It's called Crazy Zen Mini Golf because it's like. It's a crazy golf course centered around all of these like zen like rock formations like you know stacking rocks and and there's yin yangs and stuff and so it's got kind of a peaceful like zen garden feel but there's a crazy golf game in the middle of it. This game is super fun, right? Kind of. <laughs> it's one of those games where it's so bad it's kind of fun at the same time. So bad that it's good. Exactly. There were a couple times where we tried to putt our balls <laughs> up a hill, and the ball would just go right through the hill and fall off of the stage. <laughs> the camera's absolutely Wee. terrible. It would be better if they could just go through the walls. It would be better if you, could, yeah, exactly, because it, it just it won't go through the walls. So you end up like inside the ball when you're trying to aim if your ball like is you're against a the wall. Tiny person. Yeah. Inside the ball and try to. Transparent ball, yep. which is not transparent on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> the camera, the frame rate's really bad. The balls just bounce around anywhere. Like there's no discernible physics. It's just pretty crazy. But it was it was fun to play with you, I think, because we would just sit there and laugh. There's this one level where there's a teleporter, and you're, like you're supposed to like a roller coaster. To, yeah, it's like a roller coaster level, and it goes around. It goes down this big hill, and everything's fine. The second of the second. And you're supposed to put it onto this teleporter, which is supposed to transport you to a different spot on the course which to get would to the send you to a cannon to launch you over to like where the hole is, right? Yeah. yeah. But what happens when you go in the teleporter? It just shows the picture, the intro picture, and you just stay where you go. Yeah, like it loads something and then it drops you back onto the teleporter you just came and from. You, and then you can't get out. Yeah, and if you land on the teleporter, you can't take your next turn and it locks the game up. So you have to make sure that you, the only way we were able to get past that, and this is like the middle of course two. The level two of course two. Yeah, whole two course two. The only way to get past that is to keep putting back and forth to max out your number of putts so that it will let you fail the course so that you can get onto the next course because there's it's like this game breaking bug in the middle of the game. <laughs> If they made it, if they made the whole game better, then we would always play it. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it, it looks like it could have been fun. It just needs a lot more work. A lot more physics. A lot more physics. And a lot more debugging. Yeah, it was just very, very unfortunate. There's mm -hmm. a lot of really ridiculous, like the courses are unforgiving. There's a lot of really just mm -hmm. cheesy stuff. Like, you go around a blind corner, and there's a cannon there that shoots you off the course into the out-of-bounds. Like, there's just stuff that shouldn't... And, and and the camera angles don't let you see far ahead of you. Like, if you were actually standing on the golf course as a real person, you'd be able to see the whole course. But yeah. the game camera doesn't let you see what's coming up, so it's... No, it just lets you see in front of you. It's so silly. Yeah, unless you go all the way up. Yeah, so this is... Or a... you fall, or you hold X and right. hold well, the track. Well, if you make... You can make the camera go in and out, but... But as you go out, you end up looking directly down on the ball. So you still can't see in I front mean, of you. I mean, technically, because it makes the whole course smaller so you can kind of see what's coming up. Oh, when you're zoomed out. Yeah, but then yeah. you can't see the detail of where you're trying to go. Nope. This game is a bummer. And we do not recommend you buy it unless you want to make fun of a terrible game. Yeah. We played through the whole thing. There's only three courses. Nine holes for each course, so 27 holes total, yep. all on the same theme. Each one has a different background music, which and the background music is pretty good. But there's only three. There's only three different pieces of music the in the game. The tutorial music is the same as course as, one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's technically four courses, I guess, with three pieces of music. Uh, I, there were no credits for the game. I had to... Uh, extract the game's music files from the Nintendo, uh, Switch. Nintendo Switch game image. And I was only able to find out the composer because the game music file had his name on it. So he's not even credited for the music in the game unless you hack the game <laughs> to get the files out of there. But Jan Grankowski is a Polish composer. He's got a pretty big portfolio. He's made a lot of music for indie games like Feed the Frog, uh, Gnomes, Heavy Battle, Beyond the Space, lots of like mobile games, Nazi Zombies Portable, which came out on the PC and PSP, 
uh, Heavy Charge for PC, Uzi Earth Adventure for the Xbox 360, and then uh, most recently a massive online multiplayer game called Gloria Victus. And uh, mostly for Polish developers, so I'm not sure how many really got popular in, in North America. But he's got a lot of soundtracks to his name. And he's mostly, like, does, like, medieval kind of uh, acoustic kind of stuff. So this is kind of a different direction for him. Kind of a jazzy, warbly bass with some hip-hop drums. So it's pretty good. But uh, like I said, don't play the game. Never play the game. Unless you want to make fun of it. Unless you want to make fun of it. And it's, like, on sale for, like, a dollar on the eShop or something like that. All right, Logie, what do we got coming up next? We have got Space Valley from Kirby's Dream Course on the SNES on 1994, composed by Hirokazu Ando. Oh, you should remember Hirokazu Ando, right? Yep. Because we did a lot of Kirby games back when we did our Kirby episode. Yes, and he's always in Kirby. He's always hanging out with Kirby's music. All right. Unless it's a different composer. Right. All right. Well, let's give it a listen. We'll be right back. Goodbye. That was Space Valley from Kirby's Dream Course that came out on the SNES in 1994, composed by Hirokazu Ando, as we just said before. A huge, gigantic name in Kirby music. Yeah. Yep. This definitely sounds like a Kirby song, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So what'd you think about this one? Kind of light and bubbly, like all Kirby music is. Well, and bubbly is a very good way to describe it. This one is uh, kind of frenetic. It makes me think of one of those, like, green greens levels where Kirby's got to run really fast to get from one side of the screen to the other. There's, like, something chasing him or something, or or you see the wind blowing really quickly and the clouds are moving really quickly behind him. It's got that kind of hurry-up-and-go kind of feel, right? Mm-hmm. Very nice bass tones, very pleasant sounds, really simple kind of percussion. All these are kind of tropes of the classic 16-bit Kirby games. And uh, this game is fun. Do you remember playing this game? Um, yeah. Did you think it was cool? I, yes. I kept wanting to play it with you, and you were like, nah, I don't want to play right now. Um, well, I just didn't really... Get, get better things to do? Yes. That's fair enough, I guess. I have had a ton of fun with this game. This is one of the games that's included on the SNES Classic. And with good reason. It's great to play with two players. So my coworker and I, a while ago, when my boss was out for a long time, he bought his SNES Classic in when we didn't have anything to do at work. And we spent like two straight days playing through the entire game together and just having a huge amount of fun. It's kind of like mini golf, I guess. It's more like crazy golf than mini golf, but it's an isometric view. Crazy Zen mini golf. (laughs) Crazy Zen mini golf. It's an isometric view style game. And... You 
have a you know your standard kind of power meter like a regular golf game and you would choose how to uh, shoot Kirby across the screen because he is your stand-in for your ball and the object is to kind of roll around the screen up and down hills and left and right and through water and sand and lava and spikes and and try to destroy every enemy on the level and once you do that, the last enemy will turn into a hole that you can put yourself into. And you get points for how many hits it takes to get into the hole. And you get to absorb, in true Kirby fashion, the powers of the enemies that you hit as you go through the course. Which is really cool, because at the beginning of the game, usually you just get one power. And it's usually a power that you need for that particular course. You'll get, like, um, the wheelie power to, like, zoom through sand. You turn into a wheel or something like that, or uh, Umbrella, so that you can float down safely from a high cliff. But towards the end of the game, you're able to kind of choose and pick which enemy you hit first, so you can choose which power you want to use for the rest of the course, and I like having that choice. So we have to play this game sometime. I know you keep wanting to play Froth over and over and over again, but... Because I want to play it right after we're done with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, we, 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 uh, we, took a, we took a quick break, and we are back two days later recording the end of this show. And in that time, we've played another couple rounds of Frolf. <laughs> gotten a couple extra Item. opponents and unlocked some stuff and figured out more about how the game works. And we are getting slowly, slowly enamored with Ribbit King. So that's a game everybody needs to play. Yeah. yeah. All right. I think we've talked about Kirby's Dream Course enough. I personally yeah. love this game. Uh, I, I think it's one of the best games ever released for the Super Nintendo. There's a lot of depth to it, so you don't just kind of put Kirby across the ground. You can switch up your hit and have him take to the air and give him a spin so that when he lands, he will bounce in different directions, and it'll kind of show you on the screen the arc that Kirby will take, so you can kind of plan out your route to see which enemies you want to hit first, and if you want to bounce over a hill or hit a hill and bounce backwards. And So when you're playing with a friend, you guys have a lot of competition with each other because you're both trying to get the best hit uh, and who gets the most enemies in the level is going to be anybody's guess because mm -hmm. equal part skill and luck with Kirby's Dream Course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. We are ready for our last track. So up next is Golf Music 2, very original name, from Fun Fun Mini Golf Touch. This was composed by Martin Scholler, and it's a game released in 2017 for the 3DS. We'll be right back.
that was Golf Music 2 from Fun Fun Mini Golf Touch. Came out on the 3DS on 2017. Composed by Martin Scholler. Cool track. I mm-hmm. like this one. Cool game, too. But this uh, music track is very frenetic. It feels... I liked um, putting it right after the Kirby's Dream Course because I feel like they, they sound really similar to each other. They've got really, really frenetic beats and a really nice, rich, deep bass line. What'd you like about the song? I liked everything. You liked everything? Yes. Anything in particular? How'd it make you feel? Bouncy. Mm-hmm. It's pretty bouncy. I like the, the kind of calypso, like, bongo drums. That was really cool. It's a nice little staccato bass line. This is kind of there. like a fun and bubbly music, too. Yeah, very similar to... Kind of doesn't have the Kirby feel, but it's very, very similar in kind of, like, pace and brightness, I think. Mm-hmm. Right? Very happy. Yeah. Kind of makes you want to keep playing. Mm-hmm. Mini golf. This is a really, really true mini golf game. Probably the most traditional mini golf game we're featuring on the show. Um, yeah. Yeah. Can you describe how you play it a little bit? Well, like we know the rules of mini golf. We know you have to get the ball into the hole, but yes. how do you do that when you play the game? You touch the um bottom screen. You touch on the outside to rotate the angle. Also, to um shoot, you put your finger on the ball and pull it back as much as um as much as you need to right yeah yeah it's the power and then you let go there's a little dot that goes back and forth over the ball and you have to let it go at the right time and this is if you want to curve the ball a little bit you can let it go when the dot is to the left of the ball or to the right of the ball but if you want a straight ball you let it go when it's in the middle yep. and it'll sail towards its destination mm-hmm. which hopefully is right into the hole correct Yes. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, so this is a port of a Wii game, a WiiWare game, actually. It was just called Fun Fun Mini Golf on WiiWare, one of the downloadable games for the Wii. But they ported it to the 3DS and made the game fully 3D. And it's good. I mean, it's it's made by uh, Shinen, the same guys who made, like, Fast Remix and Nano Stray and a bunch of those shooters for the, for the DS. And uh, most of the game's programming was done by video game music composer Manfred Lenzner, who you might remember from the Fast Remix series, but he did not write any of the music for this game. Uh, Martin Scholler composed it, and Martin Scholler and Manfred Lenzner have worked together at Shinen for a long time. Sometimes they've shared duties on the soundtrack, but Scholler's working solo here. And there are a bunch of uh, tracks for the Touch version that are exclusive to the 3DS, but this is a track that appears in both the Wii and the 3DS version. It's cool. The courses are very traditional. They're very kind of flat. They look like a track that you would see if you were to visit a real mini golf course, and you earn coins depending on how you do. And uh, what are some of the things you can buy with the coins? You can buy the me, the courses, and trick shots. Yeah, so you can you start off with a kind of a generic character. Oh, and also you can get plus one balls for the trick shots, and you can get the golden set. Oh, what's the golden set? I don't even know what that golden, is. A golden club and a golden golf ball. Neat. Do they have extra powers, yep. or is it just for flashy show? Yep. Neat. Just for good richness. <laughs> I want to go mini golfing and show richness. off my good richness. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually what it said on it. Imagine if you went to a mini golf course and you showed up with a golden putter and you're like, no, I don't want your putter. I want to use this putter. What do you think they would say? Uh, sure. <laughs> They'd be like, whatever, kid. And they would be like, would you want a ball to go with that? And they would be like, no, thanks. I'm using this ball. It's a golden ball for my golden putter. And it would for... sparkle in the sunlight. Yeah. Hmm. It would look like gold. <laughs> That's what a golden ball would look like, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. So, uh, fun, fun, mini golf touch is actually a really fun game. There's not a lot to it. Uh, if you find that on the eShop for pretty cheap, I'd say go ahead and grab it. Metacritic scores are very low for this game for some reason. I don't know why. It's really solid. Uh, excellent frame rate. Really good graphics. Uh, the golf is just fun. But like I said, it's just not a lot of content. So maybe they're scoring it low based on the fact that there's only, 
uh, I think, three different courses of nine holes each, and they're fairly simple. But there's a lot to unlock. Uh, there's lots of those trick shots, too, which is, like, some extra cool bonus content along with the um, courses themselves. So... I don't know. And the music is really good. I mean, Martin Schuller is an excellent composer. There's uh, this is the fastest of the three in-game course songs that you can uh, that you hear as you play throughout the game. But uh, the other two are very cool as well. Kind of want to go off on something a little high energy to follow up Kirby's Dream Course, you know? Yes. All right, man. That is yes. that is all the stuff we have for today. What do you think? Was this a good show? Yes. Like a little quickie show. Yes. What was your favorite song that we played? Lavatron 2. Really? Okay. I, I'm, and I'm, Super Golfio. I'm kind of with you on that. Yeah, Super Golfio is great, but it's like in a different... Cl- it's it's just great because it's fun. Um, as far as composition goes, I really like uh, Space Valley from Kirby's Dream Course. And Lavatron 2 is really good, too. Of all the games that we've played, which is your favorite game, never mind the Ribbit music. King. Ribbit King. So that's really like soundtrack and game top-notch for you. Yes. Yeah. Mini golfing in real life. Better or worse than video games? The same. The same. Okay. But you really like it in video games, so I'm assuming you really like it in real life, right? Yes. And Ribbit King. More fun than real life mini golf or less fun than real life mini golf? A little more fun. A little more fun. It is pretty darn fun. We should, we should, I would love to uh, maybe get a capture card and, and play this game and do like a a stream online or something, you and me playing Ribbit King. Would that be fun? Yeah. Play it, play it for some friends online? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, speaking of friends, next episode coming up, we're going to have some special guests hanging out with us. Who's who's coming over? Emily and her friend. Emily and her friend, the Renaissance, who I've never met before. Uh, I've only communicated with him via email, but he has, uh, he has a Twitch stream, too. And we're going to have a lot of fun together. She's going to hang out with us for a couple days. We're going to record a show. We're going to play some music. Ren is going to bring his guitar and maybe play some video game music songs and do a little guitar show concert for us. So Cut. I think... Guitar jam. Guitar jams. Yeah. BGM guitar jams. And we might have some kazoos in the process as well, humming some video game tunes. Yep. I think it's going to be a really fun show. So mm-hmm. all, all four of us will be on there, so you can look forward to that. Logan, you're going to be on two shows in a row. You will be, besides me, the the only person to ever appear two shows back-to-back on the VG Embassy. How do you feel about that? Cool. It is pretty cool. I like it, too. Any any ideas for other themes for uh, future shows you want to be on? Hmm. I know this really isn't a thing, but just games that we think that are crazy. Crazy games? Yes. Ooh, that's a good idea. We'll follow up crazy golf with crazy games. Duh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've, we've used a couple crazy games for this, but there are quite a few crazy games out there, right? Yeah. I think so, too. Cool. All right. Well... As always, I'd like to thank Indira J for the art and Trevin Hughes, a.k.a. Dread, for the podcast theme song. And you can find our show on iTunes at the VG Embassy, Instagram at the VG Embassy, on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash the VG Embassy, or head over to our webpage at the VG Embassy.com, and there you will see links to my Patreon page and our Discord link where you can come and hang out with scores of amazing VG ambassadors and fans and listeners of the VG Embassy, and we chat about video games and just general fun nonsense all day long. Super, super fun. As always, I'd like to thank our Patreon patrons. We're going to have our caddies, Cameron Childs, a.k.a. Bruce Irons of the Mad Gear, who I had a blast hanging out with at MAGFest. You are a class act, Cameron. Michael Bridgewater from the Forever Sound Version podcast. He only golfs in England because he's from the UK. Yeah. Donovan Orofino. He's on the European course because I think he is from France. Cool. Yeah. And Chris Murray, who I also hung out with at MAGFest. But he's in America, so he can play in the American courses. Oh yeah. Yeah. Our <laughs> VG emissaries. These are the up-and-coming golf superstars. Chris Myers, John Jekyll, a.k.a. Mixix Master, Ben the Diet Dishman, 
from the Diet Presents, a VGM podcast. Chris Steenerson from the VG Jam podcast and VG ambassador of our last episode. Jordan Worma from the Table to Stage podcast. Volt Supreme, he's hanging out in Australia. And David Parrish, our audio attache members. This is the golf party that I go out with every Sunday morning <laughs> to go shoot some some balls into some holes. <laughs> Cameron Worma. Carlos from the Heroes 3 podcast, who I also hung out with at MAGFest and is a super cool dude. Scott McElhone and Dan Lawn. And our VG ambassador, the patron saint of VGM podcasts, Alex, the messenger messenger. He owns the course and he has his own podcast. The Messenger Presents, a VGM journey podcast. All right, Logie, time to go. Shoot some holes. Shoot some holes? Yeah. Like with a gun? No! Oh! With a putter and a golf ball. You're gonna put a hole into the number one and call it a hole in one? Speaking of which, go download Go download What the Golf. Right? Yup. Download What the Golf. It's hilarious! Go go to a used game store, a, a retro game store or eBay, and buy Ribbit King, because you need to do that right now. Yes. Go play Kirby's Dream Course with a friend, because that's super, super fun too. More fun than fun. Have a party and play Barry Bradford's Putt Panic Party. If you want to. And stay try. far, far, far away from what? From Crazy Zen Golf. <laughs> exactly. Unless you want to make fun of it. Yeah, unless you want to have a bad time. All right, and guys. And make fun of it. We'll see you. Both of us will be back in two weeks. Goodbye. Goodbye. We're in a hole in one. Oh, no. <laughs> Get me out of this hole. No, never. Somebody put me out of this hole. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never doing that. Aww. Ever. Ever.